to. Yes, sir. Just wait until it gets to the item. And you will raise your hands and uh, we'll call uh, on I'm you. not on a computer Zoom. I'm calling in on the phone. You can press uh, star nine should be to raise your hand. Okay. If you want to give that a test. Just press right star now. nine to raise my hand. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for your help. Uh, I'll try sure. zooming in next time, but, but I'll star nine when they get to the, uh, I guess it's item four. Is that right? I believe so. Um, there's a public, is there a public hearing? Sorry, I don't know. I need to pull it up. Um, it is, yes, item four, correct. And we're about to get the meeting started. We are I, I didn't hear what you just said. What? It, it is item four. Uh, we're about to get the meeting started. We are waiting on quorum of the RCDC. We need okay. one well, thank you for your help. And I, I, I my name is Jesse Butler, and I'll just uh, star uh, nine when they get to item four. Then, thank you. You bet. Um, I just heard from David Smith, and he said he's about ten or fifteen minutes late, uh, but he will be joining. I haven't heard back from Becky yet. Okay, we'll just hang out until. David Smith can join us. <laughs> can you uh, can you tell this is Barry? Um, can you tell David that we're waiting on him for quorum? So I mean, right now we can't do anything until he gets here, so that delays yeah, the meeting like fifteen minutes. I mean, I know he's aware. I let him know we're we're one short. Or Barry, if you don't want to wait, if you wanted to call the meeting. I mean, okay, well, we don't have a quorum. I can't call the meeting. We can't have a meeting yet. Well, no, I, I mean, you could cancel the meeting. No, no, we're not doing that. I mean, there's people on the line that want to speak. I don't want to do that. I'm just, just trying to nudge a, another RCDC member to get sure. on the line. It would be unfair for everyone that wants to speak. Mary, are you able to reach out to Rebecca? Yeah, so ju just this is uh, Barry again. So just uh, just for everyone that's waiting for public comment or wanting to speak on the topics that are on the East agenda, we can't really have the meeting until we get a quorum. And so we're just waiting on them. It may take, it sounds like another five to 10 minutes at this point until we're able to hold a meeting. So I just wanted to keep you all up to speed of kind of where we're, we're at. But I, my preference um, would be to wait until we get a quorum and not have to move this meeting especially since people took time out of their day for it, so.
so have we tried we've tried calling Becky is that right I just left her a message okay we're waiting I'm gonna run down and get some water I'll be right back it'll take 10 seconds from my side um Pat we yeah. received two checks um one from little league and one from girls softball for each of their a portion of of the lease and um we received those on September 5th. So okay. that's why you don't see them in the financials. All right. So the prior year we got them. Yes. All right. Super. Thanks, Abel.
Hey, Amber, Ashley, or any uh, word on on anyone else coming? Becky or David? <clears throat> David's on his way as quick as he can. I let him know. We have not heard back from Becky. All right. We'll pat it. Just five more minutes. Hey Amber, uh, and Ashley, this is Barry Elkambri again. If we if we can't have anyone on here by twelve twenty, we're gonna need. I think we should consider moving this because this is. Not, I mean, it's just we're just sitting here wasting everyone's time at this point. I didn't want to move this, but the fact that we're just sitting here waiting and there's something that may not happen. Well, if we we waited this long, if David's on his way, I mean, he said ten minutes ago he was fifteen minutes out. So if we want to. Um, Pat? Yes, I'm here. Hi, my name is Paige Allum. Um, I'm not sure if you're the person I'm supposed to be talking to. Um, I just wanted to speak on behalf of a couple of people who showed up to this meeting specifically right now, who um, might not be able to stick around for the entire time. And I just wanted it to be noted that we were um, present and that we wanted to speak on behalf of um, in support of Tiny, um, the, the milk and cookies in the park. And so it just is unfortunate because if some people have to leave, then right. we lose that. So I just wanted to make sure that was noted somewhere. We had, the meeting hadn't started, so I mean. Uh, right, but it's supposed to start at 12, right? So if, if people yeah. have to leave because they can't wait, I'm just a little concerned, that's all. Sure. We have to have a quorum for this meeting to be held and we don't have that right now as a, as a, as a committee. So we can't, we can't take any action or even start the meeting, which is now, one twelve twenty. Mm -hmm. So, um, can can we call him one more time and see if he can just get on the phone and then transition to the computer? I, this is Emily talking. Okay, we're working on it. Um, Megan, can they take comments? Um, hey, Becky's trying to join. She's oh, Becky's trying to oh, join. Okay, okay, great. Mm -hmm. And again, thanks everyone for the patience. We appreciate it. Megan, if Becky couldn't join, could they take comment or can you just not even, you don't have quorum so you can't call the meeting to order?
You're on mute, Megan. You're still on mute. How about now? Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Too much, too much technology. Um, you've got it posted as a public hearing and, and you've noticed that. Um, if you don't have a quorum, you can allow individuals to speak. Um, I'm not sure that it, it depends on whether or not you'd be required to have another one if the meeting is moved because of your um, because of the code requirements for the RCDC. But if the council would also have a public hearing on these items, if they move forward, um, we could look at whether or not that would suffice. Okay. We should have Becky joining us shortly. There she is. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. All right. So now if we, we have everyone, right? So we have a quorum, we can we call this have to everyone. All right. So can we start with our roll call? Yes, sir. Great. Emily Doran here. Go ahead. Pat Sheehan. Pat Sheehan here. Barry Del Cambry. Here. Becky Kittleman. You're on mute, Becky. Okay, here. All right. All right, so we have a quorum, so we can move on to the, the next item, right, which is public comments not addressed to the agenda. So this would be anyone that wanting to speak on an item that's not necessarily covered in the agenda items below. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Just raise your hand. Like to speak. If you're putting it on a phone, you press star nine. There are no hands raised, Barry. Yep, I think so. I think everyone's here for other items on the agenda. So um, I think we can Motion to close public comments and move on to the next item. You don't need a motion yeah, to close. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm more of asking the team. I'd like to get, I'd like to move on to the next item. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. So the next is the discussion on uh, possible actions for the minutes on April uh, 8th, 2021. Um, more of the discussion will relate to the regular agenda, but this is one where I think we're ratifying the minutes, correct? So I move we approve okay. the minutes. Yep. I second, yeah. Emily seconds. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All, right. uh, aye. all opposed? All right, so we'll move over uh, to the regular agenda and I'll, I'll give a brief update because actually a lot of this uh, items four uh, through six are really in regards to the just the, the meeting that uh, Emily uh, and myself uh, had with the Park Commission um, last week. Um, we basically presented essentially what was the minutes from April 8th and kind of what we had discussed in the previous RCDC meeting, uh, giving an update on the work we'd done with milk and cookies, um, allowed them to review the if they wanted to the actual term sheet uh, and kind of pitch the overall concept of having an entity uh, within the park um, approximately taking up 1200 square feet of space uh, allowing it to help maybe potentially fund um, future park uh, efforts um, so make the park kind of self-sustaining um, and then from there um, we had some q a uh, even though it was in the public comment section um, regarding that with the park team and then we told them we would come back and put it on the items here. Items four through six actually are kind of a, as a result of, of the meeting that we had with the park commission. Um, and, you know, I, I may have 
generalize that a little bit, but I think we're going to get into it on the next uh, four items or next three items. So, um, Emily, if you want to add anything, or if Amber, if I should be more detailed there and prep for the other three, just let me know. Good from Emily's end. Good from the city's end. Okay. Um, so the next one, I know there's been a lot of people waiting um, on the line. We have a public hearing on kind of the term sheet with tiny box words on the purpose of operating uh, milk and cookies. And um, I think this is going to be turned into actually, this is what we titled it, but it's more of, I think, a general um, discussion with the community of both the term sheets and the concept itself. So I think we want to open this up now um, with uh, the rest of the members that are waiting. I will say um, that to date, um, and as I mentioned on the Park Commission meeting previously, you know, we've done a lot of work from RCDC and other uh, community members on the, on the project. Um, we want this to be a very transparent process as well. Um, and so this is just part of us, RCDC, um, working within the different committees within the city and the community to try to bring ideas and concepts forward that both further um, the, the charter of the RCDC, but also um, help look for areas to enhance the community. So from there, uh, and with that being said, I'd like to you know, turn this over to the rest of the community so they can, they can speak about, um, about this. And as Amber said before, I think uh, given that we're on Zoom instead of in person, we'll need to have your hands raised. And then I think she can go down um, and call the different individuals that have their hands raised. And if you're on the phone, I believe that you said it's star nine um, yes. is what you press to raise your hand. So we'll, we'll just start from there. Barry, Brian Ryder has his hand raised. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Brian. I think I have, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I spoke at the park commission meeting and introduced myself there as being one of the uh, incorporators of the RCDC and its first president a number of years ago. Um, and I am very opposed to this milk and cookies concept um, for a couple of reasons, um, but I'll try to do it quickly. We've, we have done and spent a lot of city money to do a master plan for the park. There is no milk and cookies or a retail establishment for a master plan in the current master plan for the park. Um, and so I don't know why we're not implementing in the master plan instead of talking about uh, varying from it after having spent all the time to do it. Um, but specifically on the proposal for milk and cookies, uh, I would say that um, it has significant problems in addition to just being a wholly new and possibly unwanted use in the park. Um, this is a restaurant. Their website says they're a restaurant. They have breakfast goods. They have lunch sandwiches for sale. This is not an elaborated concession stand for the benefit of the kids who are at the swimming pool or over at the Little League. Um, who this might be is an issue. The way this thing is set up with the assignment clause, I'm a, re I'm a commercial real estate lawyer, retired now, by the way. Um, the way this is set up, the, the assignment clause is set up to do what's called the target two-step. And that is to allow an assignment of a lease to a subsidiary and then the sale of that subsidiary to Starbucks or somebody else of that sort. So we don't know who we're really gonna be dealing with over the long term. We don't know exactly what the term's gonna be. It's five years with three five-year options. In a normal retail setting, you'd have some limitation on getting those options exercised such as not being in default, having paid some percentage rent, some things like that to indicate it's a successful operation. We don't have that here. So we could be stuck with 20 years on the first day uh, with a 20 year lease. The rent is not rational. We have, first, I don't think there's an agreement on the rent, but um, it's flat for five years and then starts going up at 2% a year after the, at year six is the way I read the thing. Just uh, this week, the Fed announced that inflation is running at 4%. Uh, so a 2% increase after five years of no increases uh, seems to me not to be a very good idea. Um, and then it says in one place that this is a triple net lease. And I know Jamal is here. 
uh, and so he can explain this, but then the landlord is to pay the, in the insurance for the operation, uh, not for the liability, but for the building. We're supposed to pay the, the park commission or whoever it would be, the city, I guess, would have to pay the insurance. A normal retail operation like this would be paying percentage rent, taxes, insurance, and everything like that. Um, I think one of my big issues and a big issue with the citizenry is going to be the lights and the signs. We have had discussions, and I've lived here since 1985, so we've had discussions for at least 35 years over whether we have lights or signs in the park. And the answer has always been, no, we don't want that. We don't want signs on the little league fences and we don't want lights. Now this is set up to have a sign on the building. Uh, it doesn't say how big, it could be the entire side of the building. And the lights will be security lights, which of course will be shielded down on the sign. But we're gonna have lights and signs in the park. And once we open this um, um, gate, if you will, to lights and signs, we're gonna have to argue that with, with uh, our with their all future uses. Um, there needs to be a lot of legal work done if this lease were to come to be. Uh, again, I don't know why we would want to do this uh, and uh, I'm opposed to it. And I think there are a lot of folks, including the people across the street who have spoken to me about it and others. Uh, this just doesn't fit with Rollingwood. It doesn't fit with the nature of the city and it doesn't fit with the uh, historical uses and future uses for the park. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Barry Jamil Alam has his hand raised. Go ahead and unmute, Jamil. Uh, hi, thank you. Um, I, I am uh, in support of uh, this use. Um, I think it was the I think it was the French historian Voltaire that said, you know, please don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, Rollingwood's a, a great community. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful things about, uh, about the park in particular. Um, but if you don't have a dog that likes to uh, play with the other dogs in the morning, and if you don't have a child who, um, who plays baseball, um, there's not a lot of um, activity um, in the park or uh, draws to the park, if you will. And um, I think Rollingwood, uh, uh, as, many, uh, as many wonderful attributes as it has, uh, doesn't really have uh, uh, any walkable uh, establishments. Uh, going down to bee caves uh, with your kids as a family is not uh, the most pleasant experience by foot or bike. Um, and so this use would not only activate the park for a variety of, of, uh, uh, of activities, uh, create a walkable amenity. It would, as mentioned earlier, generate revenue for park maintenance. Uh, it would generate sales tax for the city. <clears throat> It'd be a safe place for the kids uh, to go by foot or by bike. Um, it would be a great place for our kids uh, particularly those that don't um, uh, aren't of driving age or have the ability to drive uh, to get a job, and um, you know one of the you know one of the comments I've heard is is um, uh, some of the feedback is about traffic. Um, you know, will it create traffic? Absolutely, uh, I'm certain it will. Um, uh, if you've been to the the milk and cookies uh, over in Terrytown, uh, I, I I would guess for every car that shows up, there's at least one or two people walking uh, or biking. Um, uh, I would also suggest that uh, there are a lot of people from our community that are going to be driving up Rollingwood Drive to go to uh, Starbucks or uh, another coffee establishment uh, anyway. And so those trips either uh, get, get short circuited or they are now by foot. So uh, there's an offsetting component on the on the traffic. Uh, on the traffic piece. Uh, and then in terms of traffic, uh, you know, the types of traffic that really tend to generate the, the more material problems are, are peak demand traffic, where you've got something like an, a, an event, a, a baseball game, a, a church event, um, you know, a, a movie a theater, if you will, where you've just got a tremendous people coming and leaving at specific hours. 
um, the type of traffic that, that, that this uh, will create is sort of very slow, steady, consistent traffic. If, again, if you've been to the one in, in Riker Woods, um, I, I, I think you will find uh, that all of the residents have found the milk and cookies uh, to be a huge amenity um, for that neighborhood. Uh, and then I, I guess I want to just touch on one last point. Uh, uh, Mr. Ryder mentioned the, um, you know, the, the, the rent and the percentage rent increase. And, and I really didn't call in to, to comment on, on the lease document itself. Um, but, uh, but I don't think that, that, um, that 4% CPI increases are, are anywhere near consistent with where the market is for retail leases today. Uh, if what I heard is accurate, a five-year lease with 2% bumps uh, beyond five years, that does not strike me as being uh, out of context with a, a typical market at all. Um, so I'll pause there. Thank you. Barry, we have, um, it's D Dylan's iPhone. Hello, this is Debbie Dillon. I had my, my daughter here with me, but she had to go back to class because we had waited so long. Um, she wanted to speak as well, just on behalf of her age group in the neighborhood. Um, we live right down from City Hall and have been here going on nine years, um, raised our two kids you know, from young. And we think this would be a fabulous amenity to the park. Um, I agree with what Jamil says about drawing people into the park. We no longer have base, you know, little league players. Um, I think it fits well in the in the Rollingwood community, and I think a large variety of age groups would would visit and um, love to have it here. I agree that the traffic will be mostly on foot and by bike. Um, I think signage and lights can be attuned to the way you know Rollingwood wants them and the neighbors want them. I don't think that should be a deal breaker. And I also don't feel like we shouldn't adjust to change, you know, as, as a neighborhood develops. I think we need to go on a master plan that's 35 years you know, old. We can make some adjustments that the community finds beneficial. Um, I'll stop there. Barry, I should have also said, let's let the record reflect that David Smith has joined the meeting and Paige Allen, you can unmute yourself. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to talk on behalf and in favor of Milk and Cookies. I think you will be delighted if you understand who we're talking about here, the business. It's beautiful. The people who run it are wonderful people. This is not some chain coffee shop. It would bring people together and unify this community. And I think this community wants that, needs that. We have so many people moving into our neighborhoods now and they might not be from here. And I see it as a place that would bring just rolling wood people together. And I know there's been some concern that it would bring so many people from other places, which is great also. We want other people to come into our neighborhood and see how great it is and help raise money and the tax base. But also we have young kids still and it's a safe place to go. It, I can't even explain to you how beautiful Milk and Cookies is. And so I know the lighting will be tasteful and they would work with you on that. It's not gonna be anything that's blaring and glaring and obnoxious. It will be fit right. I mean, they, they're fantastic. I can't hardly think of another place that I like to look at more than the way that that is set up over there. I mean, they're landscape specialists. And so that would be beneficial as well to have something beautiful fit into our park. Um, also, I, I love the idea of having neighbors in the park kind of up until nine o'clock at night because that makes me know that it's a safe place. Sometimes when I walk by the park late at night, it doesn't feel good to me. It's completely dark. There's no one there. And so I see that as bringing life there as well. And so I'm really excited to talk about the opportunities for this being possible. And I hope everyone will keep an open mind about it because I think change can be really good sometimes. And I understand, I lived right across the street from the park and I had people in front of our house. I thought it would make me crazy all the time because of the swimming pool. And I actually enjoyed it because it was, it was life. And I could hear the wonderful sounds 
and I enjoyed it. And so I just wanted to add that. And I thank you very much. Barry, we've got Greg Thompson with his hand raised. You can go ahead and unmute, Greg. Okay. Um, hi. Let me turn this for just a second. This is Greg Thompson. I actually have um, Bob Kelly is a former mayor of West University in Houston, um, which is where we have our original milk and cookies. And he had uh, some comments he wanted to share just as a, a representative of um, another municipality, very similar to Rollingwood. West University, if you're not familiar with it, is in the middle of Houston and surrounded completely by the city of Houston. It's, it's incorporated, has a city manager and mayor, city council uh, form of operations. But uh, I'm going to let Bob Kelly speak about his experience with milk and cookies. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. My name is Bob Kelly. I'm former mayor and mayor pro tem of the city of West University Place. I served in those functions for a total of about eight years and was term limited. Uh, Greg gave you a little insight into the city of West University place. Uh, I want to also comment on the fact that we, we like, it sounds like Rolling would consider ourselves, not only consider ourselves, we are in fact a city of homes uh, and we hold ourselves out as a neighborhood of homes. We, we are not at all enamored in by uh, any kind of commercial development to speak of. We have some commercial development on uh, our perimeter of our city. And we do have historically, and it's the only that we have had historically in the center of our city, near our elementary school and near our athletic fields. They're right across the street. There have been attempts through the years to expand that, to tear it down and build some multi-structure and add more shops and everything. And we've defeated every attempt to do that. So we're very, we play it very, very close to the best on any type of new commercial activity attempting to come into West University. And of course they like to come into West University place because of, of, of the type of demographics uh, that we have in our city. And we're very, we've been named by some publications as one of the most outstanding places in the United States to live. So we're very, very protective. And I appreciate the comments that the gentleman said at first, uh, the commercial real retired commercial real estate lawyer. Uh, we've had, we've had those kind of, uh, we have those kind of influences. We we're heavily populated by lawyers of all different specialties, doctors. Uh, and I mean, uh, we have to dot our I's and cross our T, T's as a municipal government to really do whatever we do, or we get challenged on it very quickly. A lot of times you wonder, why am I doing this? Why am I being the mayor of this when everything I do I get challenged on by every different kind of special you could imagine. So one day when Greg Thompson, and let me also give a little disclaimer here. I have no financial interest in uh, milk and cookies. Matter of fact, I've been known to mispronounce it a lot of times. I call it cream and cookies, uh, but I have no interest at all in it. Greg is a neighbor of mine, lives about five, six houses down the street from where I live. We both live with clearly within walking distance about a block or so away from our, that little business area I told you about where Milk and Cookies is located, where the elementary school is located right across the street, the West University Elementary School, and also all of our athletic fields that are behind the elementary school there in the city. Soccer, softball, and Little League all play there. Uh, so that's kind of where it is sitting. And when Greg approached me as mayor and the city council about adding this entity called milk and cookies you know we of course very skeptical you know ears go up okay now what is this you know we knew we were immediately going to hear from anybody within shouting distance of where this was proposed to be so we had to, to very 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 careful about that we understood exactly what was going to happen what greg did compared to other people while i was mayor and mayor pro tem it was absolutely incredible uh the preparation that was put and some of that's because greg lived in westview and he knew what westview was like he knew it was a city of homes he knew it was tough to probably get in any kind of additional commercial activity in 
he had his P's and Q's really outlined. Uh, he was very attentive to anything we had to say to any of our boards that would be involved in this. Well, we have all sorts of uh, boards on building standards and zoning and all sorts of stuff, particularly because this was going to be across the street from elementary school and, the, and our playgrounds. Uh, he had it all laid out. He had meetings set up, about four or five meetings with the neighbors, the neighborhood, the whole city, and, and to outline and had drawings done, and all everything outlined as to what was going to be done and uh, get all sorts of citizen input into what was going to be done. And then what, after it was in operation uh, for several months and everything, I, I kind of kept an eye on I was somewhat, somewhat tempted to how this was even an economical vibe, selling cookies and bakery products. Uh, I didn't even know sandwiches. I didn't even know that. I just wondered how this was going to work. Well, it was amazing how well it was received. And there are homes also right across the street from this project, from the milk and cookies uh, store. And I expected that I would hear from them uh, on all sorts of fronts. And everybody was concerned, of course, with parking, uh, how many, you know, everything you could think of, uh, traffic, uh, everything, how, how would this be impacting the neighborhood, particularly right around it? Uh, so, but the way it was laid out and the input that was given early on, I think, quelled a lot of that concern. And, and as it turned out, it was as it was planned that what happened is, is that it, oh, in traffic, that was another concern, is that it really did not draw a parking concern. It didn't draw a uh, traffic concern. Uh, we didn't have any problem with the lighting kind of concerns because what, what happened in reality is, it appears to me as a casual observer and, and watching it, is the people who are coming there are people who are out riding their bikes. There are people out walking. There are people at the little league field and all the soccer fields doing something else. And so they, they walk over to this facility and, and do the ice cream, the cookies or whatever. And they're not really driving vehicles over there. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of dedicated parking spots right in front of it for people that are picking up things at milk and cookies. And, and I, I'm amazed how many times I drive by, there's not anybody even parked in there, yet there'll be a line of maybe up to 10 people in line to buy their milk and cookies. They didn't get there by a car. And that was a big concern in our, in our neighborhood is parking. I mean, our streets, uh, you know, I don't know what the average, I think every family in West University seems to have four cars and half of them are out in the street. So you drive down one of our streets, we call it the, the particularly Rice Boulevard, which is close to the, it's called the Rice Dance as to how the cars have to get through there with the cars parked on the street. So parking was a big concern and, and that has not materialized and, and added to the burden of cars by this outfit, Milk and Cookies. It has been, I think, uh, considered now that I, I guess it's been, gosh, I lose track of time with this virus, at least what, two years? No, about five, come five, up on five. Five years. It, it is so, there, there's it's so little trouble to the city. I, you know, I would hard to believe it's been there five years, but uh, there has not been any, and believe me, with our citizens and as close as they pay attention, particularly to any kind of commercial development and how it's working, uh, we would have heard about it in spades if there had been a problem. And it's been considered to be really a, a viable thing to our, uh, to our city. And, and what you'll find is, I think somebody mentioned this earlier, is it's become a gathering point to some extent for our sort of teens that haven't started driving yet, that they will come up there and they'll stand in line, get their milk and cookies and stand, kind of stand around and eat it and drink it and talk to their friends and everything. Uh, and particularly after the games, people come over. And it's been a real uh, asset, I think, to, to, to the City of West University place. And as a matter of fact, we'd be very sad to see it leave because it has become so important. So if anybody has any questions I haven't covered, I'd be glad to answer them for you. Okay. 
Okay. I think I've kind of covered the waterfront. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mary Kendall Robinson has hand Hi. up. Hello. Can you see me? Yes. Can you hear? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And we live at 4818 Rollingwood Drive across from the park, and we are we are opposed. We I will say I absolutely and our family absolutely loves milk and cookies. I um we it's one of our fav family favorites, and we we attend the Austin location and the Houston location quite often. Um, so we absolutely love the idea of milk and cookies coming to Rollingwood. However, um, it, we believe that it should be in a commercial space. I believe that the existing milk and cookies are all on kind of the edge of neighborhoods in um, commercial space. And, the, and I frequent the West University milk and cookies, and I believe it's across the street from a bank and, and other um, commercial real estate. My, our concerns are additional traffic and um, it's extremely popular. There are a lot of people that are on bikes and walking, but I'm afraid that we will see people coming in from Zilker and Westlake. People will come from all over um, by car. So that is our concern. Um, and and the, operate, the operating hours are a concern. Seven, I think it's 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, is a concern as well to have a... Um, operating restaurant in a park that is zoned for a park for a park. And that that's um, our opinion and thank you so much. Okay, um, Jesse Butler, do you still want to speak? How does uh, he's muted? How does he unmute himself? Uh, star six to unmute on the phone. Star six to unmute yourself, Jesse. Can you hear me now? It's star six. We can hear you. Six. Can you hear me now? We can hear you through Diane's. Looks like she's <laughs> coming here, hon. Okay. Sorry. I was about to say it sounded like he was in another room. He was. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I do also uh, want to express my appreciation to the work of the uh, Community Development Corporation. Uh, I know how important your work is, but we do uh, want to uh, absolutely uh, express our concern about the milk and cookies proposal to have a commercial building. And we're requesting the Community Development Corporation and the Rollingwood City Council, of course, to never approve such a thing. Uh, the proposed uh, walk-up food service will increase traffic in the park and on Rollingwood Drive. People will drive into the park and park their cars to go to milk and cookies, or they'll park on Rollingwood Drive and walk across the street. The milk and cookies food service on 35th Street, the Brackerwood, has a constant stream of cars. It has walk up people as well. Last night I took a picture of a car backing into people walking up. It is not safe. The only road access into this proposed commercial building will require people in the park to walk across the road to get food. And they'll have to walk back across the busy road to get into the park. Uh, the constant stream of traffic at the milk and cookies on 35th Street does have walk up traffic. But the problem is these cars are pulling in and backing out constantly. It's an operation 14 hours a day, and the workers have to arrive well before six to get set up to prepare the meals. It has at least two shifts. It, the, the employees there, but they had three at the one on 35th Street and uh, they permanently parked there. There's a designated parking space for bicycles. That's four parking spaces. 
not to count they've requested designating parking areas for the customers. If you look at the 2018 master plan, there's only about 13 spaces that will be there eventually in the future part of the plan. This milk and cookies commercial building could actually take all of the proposed future parking spaces just for milk and cookies. Uh, after they close at nine o'clock, last night there were cars with people with the interior lights of their cars on, uh, eating food in their cars. The workers came out to empty the trash containers, to mop the front wall, to get the spill food up. There were picking up litter in the parking lot. Uh, as people were pulling away in the dark, headlights were flashing. And that's not a problem on 35th Street because it's in a commercially zoned area. The problem in Rollingwood Park is as they leave, they leave on one street and they flash the lights on their headlights into my neighbor's home. They flash the lights at night directly into the bedroom in the front room of my neighbor's home. No one would want to buy a home across the street from a commercial building that's in operation 14 hours a day with trash trucks, delivery trucks, and then cars leaving the park, flashing lights into the home. It's gonna affect the value of my neighbor's home. This is a neighborhood park. It's not safe for the children walking across the busy traffic. We have at times, the park is at maximum capacity on parking right now. And two weeks in June and two weeks in July, it is absolutely at maximum where they're parking on Rollingwood Drive, where you can't even cross the street with the traffic. That's during the Little League games. Adding a, a commercial building that's gonna need water drain. Uh, you can't shove water off the roof of that building onto the Western Hills Athletic Club. I'm a member of that club, but I know they don't want runoff, and I know the city of really would, wouldn't allow it. But the decrease in parking, it's not part of the master plan. The light at night will be on all night long. And it is disruptive to people who live directly across the street. And then the car lights leaving the park constantly. I've, I observed uh, as I left at 915 last night at the Milk and Cookies restaurant on 35th, there were high school kids in cars with the lights in interior lights of the car on as they were eating the food while the workers were mopping the front walk and emptying trash barrels. I don't want that directly across the street from my house. And I don't think any of you would either. No one would choose to live across the street from a commercial building that serves a full menu of sandwiches, coffee, candy, uh, bakery items. No one wants to live across the street from that. And that's what you would be doing if you put that. There's not really space off the road that enters into the park. There's two beautiful oak trees that potentially could be damaged if you tried to build between them. There are dumpsters there, but they have to be moved that currently are used for trash. And I believe this is gonna be a nuisance and a danger to the foot traffic that walk on the, on the trails. My wife and I walk in that park at night. I have five grandchildren that come frequently that play in that park. I have seven nieces and nephews that come and play in that park. It's a family park in a family neighborhood and it's not zoned commercially. And they should not put, no one should put a commercial building in a residential area that stays open well after nine o'clock at night with cars leaving and shining lights on the homes that, are, that have been here. I've lived in Rollingwood for almost 35 years. And we have always been committed to not having lights in that park. They will have to leave security lights on all night long. And it will disrupt our neighborhood. And I believe it'll be a nuisance. So I'm asking you to absolutely not approve this proposal for milk and cookies. 
that's about all I have to say. Uh, I am concerned about the safety of the children because the traffic that will increase, and I saw traffic last night. I can send you pictures of a car backing into two people who are walking up. I caught it on film. Car lights pulling out, lines of people, five and six in a line, waiting in line to get food with cars pulling up continually. If you go there in the morning between seven and 8.30, and if you go there at around noon, if you go at night, you'll see a constant stream of traffic. We don't need to add to the traffic to Rollingwood Drive or Rollingwood Park. And that's how I stand on it. So thanks for listening. I appreciate the opportunity to share. Flo, did you have your hand raised? Hey, Amber, this is Barry. Uh, actually, one, one question. Can I, can I ask a, just a, a brief question to the, I didn't get his name, the gentleman that just spoke? Sure, it's Jesse Butler is his name. Hey, hey Jesse, this is Barry. Just, I just had a, a, a quick question. Uh, I'm actually, I'm the president of RCDC uh, currently, but I just wanted to follow up with you on, on, I know that I understand the traffic issue. Um, that's one I think that we would address, but currently the park is dawn to dusk is pretty much the hours of operation. You know, as we look at this, both from a RCDC standpoint and council, is that dawn to dusk eliminates a lot of the lighting issues that you would, you had mentioned. I just wanted to understand your thought process on 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 that side of it as far as the lighting piece because from my standpoint as well that's a that's a big question that we have on rcdc is also the lighting right now so, i've lived here almost 35 years yep. the park is beautiful especially on a moonlit night my wife and i walk the trail let's do my neighbors at night the idea you can walk a trail in a beautiful park that's mm -hmm. scenic if you put a building there, it's gonna have security lights on it. The one on 35th Street has security lights and it has walls of lights in the trees. Uh, the idea that that light would be on all night long, it has to be. Uh, and the people are working in the park, emptying trash, mopping, cleaning up, dealing with pest control and sanitation. The lights are on. But when those cars start up and pull out of the park, the car lights flash on my neighbor's house. The cars in the parking lot directly across the street flash on my house. They come into my front room. So adding lights at night, especially after nine o'clock, after eight o'clock, is a complete nuisance and disruption to me and my family. So it's a big deal to me to not have a commercial building in this park or lights all night long in this park. Kids will be playing in a parking lot. This is a place for families and a residential, uh, people who do travel there, walk there, enjoy the park. My grandchildren and the children of others should not be dealing with a stream of cars. I recently had a floor redone in my home with a lander's flooring, the guy who sold me the flooring said, oh, I know right where you live. I cut through Rollingwood all the time, go right by your house every day. I said, really, where do you live? He says, I live in Wimberley. <laughs> he comes by Rollingwood Drive because he can come through here and miss the stoplights on BKs. You need to do a traffic study. We looked at cars yesterday. We're getting over 20 cars in five minute period at peak times. The park is completely full certain times of the day without any parking. And this restaurant is gonna need, it is a restaurant by the way, and it's like a drive-in. It is exactly like a sonic drive-in. You pull in, you get your food. The difference is you get out of your car and walk up and get your food. People then get in their car and leave quickly because they gotta go to work or they sit there and eat their food well after nine o'clock. They were last night. I saw an adult walk up to two high school girls and try to talk to them last night. I wouldn't want my daughter over there with adults I don't know. This is a serious issue, it's a safety issue. And to answer your question, Barry, yes, there will be lights on. There are lights on over at 35th Street. Go over and look. Okay, thank you. Uh, Flo, did you want to speak? If so, go ahead and unmute yourself.
You're on mute, Flo. You're on mute. Yeah. Now? Now can we can hear. What? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Flo Macklin. I lived across the street from from where you're proposing to put this horrible thing for 35 years, for, since 1969 or 59, I'm not quite sure which one. And this has been a problem with us all along. The lights in, my, in, in the living room window means I don't have any privacy. When lights go out, go on across the street, and we've been fighting this. This is a park, a daytime park for people to enjoy. We have been fighting the signs on the um, fences and the lights ever since I've moved in. Uh, and guess what? It's a very popular park without either one of them. So why change it? What in the world, who in the world thought up this silly thing of having a place to, to get something to eat or drink at night or anytime, go home and, and use it. We also have a very nice commercial park, a place on Bee Cave Road that sells everything that the milk and cookies people sell and they can go over there and get them with no thought of, of, of uh, overhead. I mean, they have overhead lights they have parking, they have everything you need. I am violently opposed to this. And I think that um, our Brian presented so many reasons why this should not happen. You put one little foot in the door and there it goes. Are we, is that a park or is that just a big place for to start a commercial? Um, Anyway, I am violently opposed to it. Thank you. Struggling. Oh, there we go. Sorry, my computer was struggling. Um, oh, Lance, go ahead and unmute. Hi, my name is Lance Thompson. I'm, I am one of the owners of Milk and Cookies and uh, just wanted to chime in a little bit and, and tell you what we were about. And I've listened to all the concerns and believe it or not, those are, I live in a neighborhood. Those are all my concerns. Those are um, my number one concerns. And we never want to go anywhere where, where we, you know, neighborhood neighbors don't want us or, um, the community doesn't want us. We're we love our neighborhoods. We we're big. You know, we do a lot of stuff for our neighborhoods that we're in. Um, my, uh, my my background is kind of landscape architecture. I'm I'm in this. I like to you know build spaces, re, uh, residential spaces that people want to be in. Green spaces. Um, I like small buildings. I um, don't like lighting. I'm not. Um, I'm kind of the anti-developer. I don't like consent, consider myself a developer. Um, if you'll ever see any of our spaces, we build small spaces on larger properties and um, um, lots, of, lots of greenery. Um, kind of how this concept came up a long time ago is, it's really, you know, how, how, what I enjoyed when I was a little kid, I'm 58 years old. I loved when I was a little kid riding my bike, going to, you know, grabbing a Coke or driving up to the store or someplace to, uh, uh with my buddies. Um, and that's kind of what these things have kind of become, you know, we've only done them in neighborhoods where people could walk up or kids could ride their bikes or parents could, you know, walk the strollers up with their babies. We do have cars come up. We don't do tables. We don't, um, you know, encourage people to 
sit around and eat. Um, but, but there are cars that come up and grab the stuff, but it's, it's, um, when I knew it was, you know, my, my goal on this whole thing is when I can see, you know, people walking, uh, from the neighborhood, um, or riding their bike up and they're in line, uh, you know, grabbing something to eat or coffee or something like that, or meeting a, a friend over here to have a coffee. That's when I knew it was, you know, you know, it, it, it's, it's what I intended it to be. It wasn't about, you know, necessarily the, the money part of it or anything like that. It's just, I love that feeling of a neighborhood where people can walk to some place or kids can ride their bike without having to worry about, you know, going across busy streets or, um, it just reminds me of the days where you could, you know, walk out your door and leave your door unlocked or keys in your car, uh, just has that feeling to it. So, um, that's all I just wanted to bring that up and, you know, and we are hundred percent, all the concerns that came up, that's, you know, our always, always our number one concerns too. And, um, we won't do something unless we can, you know, make sure everybody's comfortable with those concerns and, and that, that people want us. So, uh, the last place, the last thing we ever want to do is build something that, you know, people don't want to. So, uh, I completely hear everybody's concerns and, you know, if it works great, if it doesn't great too, I love rolling wood. I love, um, that neighborhood. Um, so I'm a, I'm a hundred percent behind everybody that talked today. So I just wanted to uh, say, you know, chime in if anybody had any questions they want to ask me i'd be happy to answer too so is there anybody else who would like to speak well since he had brought it up uh did you look for us or did somebody look for you I had somebody reach out to me uh, a couple of years ago, and I, I, I no, I didn't reach out to anybody. I just uh, um, um, somebody I, I can't even remember who it was, but somebody reached out to me, and I said if the neighborhood uh, would like us there, we'd love to be there. But it's uh, it's got to be a neighborhood decision because, um, uh, like I said, we don't want to we don't want to open up something that you know the neighbor doesn't want. But we are all about safety. We're all about community. We're all about walkability. We're all about um, all your, everybody's, all the concerns that came up, those are our number one concerns. Um, you know, and I've, I've lived my life like that too. So, um, well, well, Lynn, Lynn, you heard from three people that really honest and truly live across the street from where you're talking about. Somebody said they live across the street. I don't re She must be a new neighbor because I don't recognize her, but there are three people that live exactly across the street from there that do not want you if that's it if that's your answer then that's the the question's over um we have john hinton you have your hand raised john you're, you're up if you're able to speak yes thanks so much first off i'd like to second Comments that were made. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Now we can. Yeah, before it was very um, robotic. Yeah. Oh. Not muted. We, I can hear you. It was just, uh, it wasn't clear of what you were saying. Uh, first of all, I'll Okay. Uh, my name is John Hinton. I lived at, live at 2 Jeffrey Cove. I've lived here since the early 80s. Uh, I'd like to second uh, the comments that have been made um, in opposition uh, to the proposal. Uh, uh, and I'm not going to go over all of those, but I do want to make a couple, uh, underline a couple of those. The first item is that the, the agreement as proposed now uh, has renewal clauses at the option of the uh, landowner, of the tenant, 
uh, milk and cookies uh, for up to 20 years. And, and the city does not approve those extensions. They also have, when you go look to assignments, is a gigantic loophole that allows them to sell all of their uh, projects to, uh, to anyone without the consent of the city. So 20 years is a long time. Uh, you know, uh, those folks that have expressed uh, positive features uh, about the, the proposal, uh, I mean, they're going to be almost my age in 20 years. Uh, so I, I don't think that it's, we're not negotiating with milk and cookies. That's not the issue. The issue is what do we want to have in that park in 15 or 20 years? And do we want general foods or the BISCO to be the company that we're having to deal with? That's the first thing. The last thing is that I would ask all of you that are gonna vote in a, in a, in a little while on this issue to have some empathy for the people that live across from the park. It, it, if there's any possibility that this would impact their life and impact their property values, I would ask you to have empathy and cast your vote based upon that. And I would also respectfully ask that the vote that you cast be a record vote. So everyone now and in the future can know how you stand on this issue. Thanks. Thank you, John. Amber, I don't see any more hand raised or little, little hands on the Zoom call. I don't. Is there anyone else who would like to speak who hasn't spoken? It looks like you could close the public hearing, Barry. Okay, so we need a motion for that, correct? You just state the time and yeah. state that it's closed. Okay, it's uh, um, yeah, Pacific time, one second. Uh, 1 18 uh, p.m. Central Time, the public hearing is closed. Our uh, next item would be moving on to item number five on the regular agenda at this point. Um, the public section is closed though, so we'll move on to the draft term sheet. I think we've taken um, a lot of feedback so far. So quite, quite honestly, um, you know, I don't think council can take this up next time. I, I, I'm not sure if we should move forward with five, six, and seven right now, or if we should, um, have another meeting with the RCDC team itself for us to hash through this since this meeting is taken. This is one of our longer meetings we've had the past year. So, um, I want to make sure we have like a thoughtful discussion around these items, but I'm not sure how we could proceed with that one way or another, if we can Barry, you do Not have the sure option. Enough. So it will it will need to go if to be considered by uh, the city council. Um, it's up to our CDC um, as to whether you decide to uh, table it to the next meeting, um, or if you would like to make a recommendation to council, you could make a recommendation on you know to say no. You could make a recommendation to say yes. You could make a recommendation that says, um, yes, but we want these edits to the draft term sheet. So you have quite a few options in front of you. And um, I guess you could just open up the item and then ask for some discussion. Okay, well, I mean, I think so. I, yeah, the reason I brought that up is because I think there's been some, there's been valid points raised on both sides about kind of the term sheet itself and how we go through it since to me, that's a legal exercise in addition to like a debate. Um, I'm not sure how we solve that in this like forum is what I'm kind of where I'm asking. Barry, what's appropriate right now is for you to open it up for okay. you, you to have discussion amongst the board members. Okay, so all right, we'll move on to item number five then on discussion of possible action on draft term sheet with tiny boxwoods for the purpose of operating milk and cookies. Um, 
so um, open up to the committee members uh, on RCDC to any comments or questions at this point. I'll go first for my, I guess, from my standpoint, looking at the term sheet, there's some items that I think were valid to bring up before we, you know, I think we need to obviously work on this agreement, but I mean, ultimately, it, I don't want it to sit within uh, RCDC. Um, I'd like to, you know, our goal is to, to bring items to the to the council and to the community itself of ways to generate revenue, both for the park and to the city. So leaving it here one way or another doesn't move it to a conclusion. Um, I will say, I think just from my own standpoint and, and even some of the comments that have been brought up, um, there's been clear concerns aside from the actual, but I'm not disregarding this in any means, the direct people, uh, community members that live across the street. But I think there are hours from our side that we need to rectify regarding um, items we need to rectify around hours. Um, what is our parking plan if, if, if this ever gets approved? The lighting plan, those are all to me, and also obviously the one that was brought up multiple times around the um, loophole, if you will, of, and I'm not a contract lawyer, so I'm going to have to go with the comments here on this one, but um, allowing the the, pro the project itself to be sold, you know, without the consent. I think since it's on city property, we want to make sure that we had a very strong um, place there to say no to what was going to happen in the event milk and cookies is not there. Um, or if uh, another entity would come in, I think that's something where we should have, what you want to call it, first right of refusal or, or what, but ultimately it's the city's um, property. So and the community's properties. Um, and again, the lighting, you know, we're a dawn to dusk piece, um, you know, looking at things from that concept, I understand the, the piece of how, how it would look if, you know, people were working late past hours or lighting coming in and out into people's yards. You know, I think that's another area where to me, it makes sense to look at the hours of operation so that doesn't happen because mm -hmm. I can only imagine what that would be like. Um, and so those are things that I think would help not necessarily give this the best chance of approval, but make sure we're at least addressing these concerns in a way that truly does take into the comments that we've had. And then I think you can have a better discussion and then we'll ultimately see if it's, you know, agreeable to the milk and cookies team and, and the council as well. But to me, those are, those are valid and those are things that we need to address um, regardless of which way it goes. Um, it's ultimately the city and the community's decision, not the other way around. So um, that's kind of my two cents on it. So this is Emily Doran um, she's on RCDC as well. So the other thing I think, Barry, I agree with you on the points made and we obviously need to address those in this term sheet, but the safety piece, um, you know, is, is definitely something to think through. And I guess, and this is maybe more of a question for Amber um, or Ashley is, has there been a safety study done recently on that sort of stretch of road or no? Um, at one point there was a traffic calming study, but I wouldn't consider okay. that a safety study and okay. not recent. Okay. So I think, you know, Barry, it's something for RCDC to sort of think through of part of the plan is also a, a, a safety or traffic study. Um, you know, do we need to put in crosswalks? Do we need to put in another stop sign? You know, how, how does that play into this? That's ironic because it's the next item on our agenda. Um, I, I, I guess my point is I'm bringing that yeah, up because that's obviously a, a, a topic that, you know, I think concerns everybody in the yep. community, right? I mean, yeah, everyone general, drives, yeah. drives fast down that road and um, be it a whatever is there or what's not there, I think it's mm -hmm. worth obviously addressing um, the safety and traffic yep. piece. So that, I guess both of those, Get back to my initial point, Amber, of, mm -hmm. and so we've kind of touched on five. It didn't sound like anyone else had any comments on um, the draft sheet. So we need to make, I would like us to make amendments to that that take into account the conversations we've had mm -hmm. and make it into like legal speak versus, you know, uh, agenda mm -hmm. and community like speak. And then as far as item number six regarding the traffic safety and parking plan, that's something that, again, that kind of to me is part of this whole process of packaging up something to mm -hmm. present to the council. So okay. is that something that we work, how, what's the best way for us to go about this now? Um, so you want to direct the city attorney, or sorry, the RCDC attorney 
yes. to draft mm -hmm. the contract and to have it address um, traffic safety and also potential future uses mm -hmm. of the building. Mm -hmm. Yes, as well as hours and lighting in a way that and takes and, and that takes into the feedback that we've had, and then from there. Mm -hmm. If, so when moving that, this to council, then we could, there's a better, there's a more buttoned up agreement that we can have, a, again, another community discussion about, that we, hey, we've addressed these items, yeah. but, you know, at least there's a, a tighter, a tighter document. Okay. So we need direction from our CDC to, yeah. to, to how to draft that. What hours do you want? Well, what my, my, lighting. The, right now it says the yeah. lighting plan will be approved by the city council. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Are you good with that? Well, ultimately, I, yes, um, I think ultimately this is a city council. Ultimately, this mm -hmm. has to go to the council. So yes, the lighting plan has to go to that. I, well, I agree. No, I mean, normally we, we don't have lighting requirements in our ordinances. So this would be an additional requirement. Do you want to say that they have to go to the city council to have their lighting plan approved? And is that sufficient? Or do you want to dictate what their lighting will look like in this agreement? Mm. And what, and if so, we need direction from you as to what you want that lighting to look like. I think you're, Amber, I can think I, you, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say that, I mean, what, what we have in front of us is what, um, what we had requested from them, yep. which is the terms of this mm -hmm. uh, letter of intent. And so I would say, um, yes, any direction that you can provide okay. to us to, mm -hmm. Um, revise all of what they have in here or add additional components um, in order to kind of have this as that starting point. I, I, I'm just concerned about um, jumping straight to a lease agreement. Yeah. I think if we, we really need mm -hmm. to nail down this first and mm -hmm. I can I can provide that draft back Correct. for review yeah, based that, on the that, So input. that's what I'm trying to get to is not necessarily a lease agreement, Thank but, you. but like a uh, yeah, I mean, agreement, uh, not, an, uh, an item that we can then have a discussion on whether or not this makes sense to even move to council. I mean, the first, again, this is my opinion. I don't know anyone else is on RCDC, but I guess this is at this point me handling the, this part. So given the discussions that we've had so far for this to even, I think, make sense to move at least forward for a vote and an additional public discussion based off feedback, the first one is arrows or operation. Mm -hmm. I think two, nine o'clock, just from what we've heard, is obviously too late. We're currently dawn to dusk in the park. And so from my standpoint, and I think from the, what we've heard, dawn to dusk is open to close, meaning close like we're done. The, the, and a, the, we're gonna have to tighten up the hours, but um, I agree with what's been, um, what's been said about the lights hitting other people's you know, windows and things like that. So ideally the operation itself would be, if it was there and approved, uh, would be in some form like closed meaning traffic would be out of there by dusk, just like you would in a normal baseball game or any other mm -hmm. like commuting time. So there's, there's gotta be some, um, I don't know how you define, I don't know if you can legally define dusk as a time or dusk is means like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you describe that, but I think the operation itself would cease at dusk, right? That means it's cleaned up, ready to go. Everyone's gone. So kind of like have like a last call, if you will, at 30 minutes prior to dusk and then gives everyone time to clean up and get out. Um, 9 p.m. I, I think is just from I mean, our is community it, standpoint it is, is very this is Emily is it is it safe to say 7 30 to 7 a.m. 7 30 a.m. to 7 p.m. well no in the winter time dark is 5 30 right I mean so then you have you well right but run. what I'm saying I guess you could base it upon the calendar year of when things change or is that becoming too much in the weeds Uh, Barry, I think David um, Smith yeah. would like to yeah. express, and we haven't heard from Becky Kittleman either. So before we, yes, I would like to say something too. I just Thank think you. if you want to go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just think there's too much opposition, and I'm ready to place a vote on it just to end the discussion. And that's how I feel about it. I feel like the neighbors that have lived here for such a long time should trump any anything else so that's my feelings i'm ready to vote one way or the other 
that would save a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What, yeah, what I, is the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, David. I, I, I have a little bit of a different, you know, standpoint. I, I, I don't know that there's any, any functional, um, you know, op operating. I, I don't think that the longer you live some, someplace, the more say you get in the outcome of some place. I could argue the opposite also that, you know, some of us are going to be here for, you know, uh, you know, 20 or more years should somehow get more say. I think, you know, we're a community. I think everyone has, has a say. I've heard a lot of really good arguments and I've heard a lot of people express to me a, a, a lot of really positive things about having a milk and cookies here or a similar establishment and what it would mean. You know, I've, I've heard loud and clear from some people who are worried, I think validly so about, um, you know, things related to traffic, about hours of operation, about lighting, et cetera. Um, and I think we have a unique situation of, you know, dealing with a potential and, and, and really and truly, you know, I think of this um, more as a, uh, a concession, if you will, in a park, whether it's, you know, a national park or a, a you know, a regional park or a local park. I mean, this really to me is more of a concession than it is a, a pure commercial um, operation because it's, it's scalable. And I think it has the ability to be compatible, both from a aesthetic standpoint, from a use standpoint, and also from a landscape architecture standpoint with really the aesthetic and what we're trying to achieve in the park. Um, you know, I, I, I think whenever, you know, we have a, a chance to do something that, um, uh, you know, a lot of people are in favor for and some people, yeah, are adamantly opposed to, I think, you know, if there's any hint of controversy, I, I, I worry that, you know, if there's some people who don't like it, the immediate response is, well, let's just, you know, flush it down the toilet and, and kick it, uh, uh, you know, out of bounds and, and ignore it and, and go away. And, you know, I, I think you have to be willing to roll up your sleeves and work with people and say, you know, hey, can we, can we get there? Can we, you know, figure out a path forward that, um, you know, makes sense for the community and, and frankly allays the concerns or gets a long way of laying the concerns of some of the people who've, who've raised valid points. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's a give and take. And, and Barry, you know, as, as far as the, the term sheet is, um, is concerned, it's, I mean, it's really, it's a, it's a letter of intent. It's basically right. a, a outline for what a lease is ultimately going to look like, which um, uh, Brian Ryder, I think you uh, are the one who's going to be ultimately uh, uh, drafting this and you know, Brian's uh, uh, been around for uh, a long time, um, and I've seen him do some. Um, I, you know, I, I I knew Brian when I was a baby attorney, first starting out here, and he does some really creative um, uh, stuff. And you know, I think we have a, a landlord here who's willing to be creative. Um, I'm sorry, a, a potential uh, 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 concession tenant here who's, who's willing to be creative. And, and I, I think, um, you know, I, I'd be willing to, uh, you know, take a look at, um, you know, some things um, and, and see whether or not Milk and Cookies thinks that they're, how much flexibility they have in terms of uh, their operating model, et cetera. You know, and, and someone said, you know, the dust to dawn concept. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that where the dust to dawn concept can be captured is, um, and, and I, you know, go back to my uh, hunting and fishing regulation backgrounds. And basically, I mean, you can have a clause that basically says, you know, dusk or, or dusk is typically defined as 30 minutes after sunset, you yeah. know, so sunset on a on a daily basis can be calculated. Thirty minutes after sunset can be done, but I don't know if that sort of thing, you know, frankly, it works in in milk and cookies operating model um, or not. I mean, I think that's something to discuss uh, and explore with with them in terms of. I think what I'd like to see, um, you, you know, I I think you know we have the the letter of intent here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th there was one thing that, um, you know, I, I, I would, I would want to see if we could tighten up a little bit because, you know, I, I heard the, uh, 
the signability. Um, uh, you, you know, it, it's from a business perspective. Tiny Boxwoods may, you know, reorganize as an entity. They and, uh -huh. and thus it may be a new entity, et cetera. Um, you know, I, I think there's a way to put some sideboards on that from a legal drafting perspective, where if you know that they reorganize and the ownership stays largely the same, then yeah, I mean, we don't want to be you know dickering with that, nor do they. Right. Um, but you know, if they're kind of selling out lock, stock, and barrel. Um, you know, all of their operations to, you know, a, a, a bigger, more corporate, you know, we may want to, um, you know, have the ability to, to, you know, have some semblance of review and approval too. So, um, you know, I, I think, I think rather, I think the, uh, uh, the directive to our legal counsel would be to basically add edits to the existing, um, LOI to, um, you know, address any concerns that we have, may have, and, 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 uh, and then kick that back to uh, 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 Tiny Boxwoods and, and their attorneys. Um, you know, I, I, I just, I continue to think, you know, um, that, that there's a place for this um, uh, in the park. And, um, you know, I, I, I think there's some sideboards that uh, we could put in place that would uh, have it be a, a park amenity, but at the same time, not a, uh, a, uh, uh, not a, a noxious use um, uh, to uh, anyone in the immediate proximity uh, of the park. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I I think that, uh, you know, and, and assuming uh, Milk and Cookie still wants to uh, 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 pursue this with us, I, I think it, it, it uh, uh, merits bearing down and, and rolling up our sleeves a little bit. You know, one of the other things I, I will say, and this fits in with the, the traffic study, um, uh, et cetera, um, is, you know, we do have some park zone speed limits. I know we've talked as a community about um, uh, exploring uh, lowering speed limits community wide, um, and uh, uh, you know, including uh, within the parks park zones. You know, I, I think that we as RDC DC, you know, and we'll get to this in a minute, but I think we should be part of taking a look at that. Um, you know, with the advent of ways and and you know and things like that, telling people quicker ways to get places. I worry about cut through traffic. I have kids who, who ride bikes all over the place. And uh, I've, Miles is about to start driving next year, which terrifies me. My youngest is in first grade and rides his bike all over the place with his kid. I have a middle son's in middle school who, who uh, uh, rides his bike with buddies in middle school. That terrifies me. But, you know, one of the things that we have that is a real advantage to us and and is, I mean, we have a dedicated, you know, police department who are professional and do a good job. And one of the things is, you know, I've found um, just kind of by experience, one of the best ways to, uh, uh, you know, cut down on, on things like, like speeding is to, you know, enforce your traffic laws and uh, kind of become uh, a, a, a hard target, uh, if you will. And, you know, I, I don't want to see us, um, I, I'm not a fan of, <laughs> of speed bumps um, uh, for a lot of different reasons, including property values, et cetera, uh, noise, uh, emissions, everything else. But, you know, I think if we take a look at, at you know, speed limits, assess that, especially, you know, because we don't have a lot of sidewalks um, uh, in the neighborhood, I think that's going to help. But I think also, you know, taking a look at traffic issues should help inform uh, this process as well. And I will leave it at that for now. So, uh, David, I, I agree with everything you said. I, quite, quite honestly, I was throwing proposals <clears> or <throat> items out there just to try to move this forward. So yeah, I'm absolutely. still uh, unclear at this point of even if we provide additional uh, content to the, I mean, we can with the letter of intent as we're calling it now, what is like, how do we, we need, I would like to get, I mean, Becky has a motion to, to the, we would have to, we have to need to acknowledge here in a second. Um, actually should Amber, should we do that now? Cause she did make a motion actually to table this. Mm -hmm. So 
She just didn't make a motion, but oh. you could ask if there's a motion. Okay, because if, you know, I want to. Be Becky, do, do you want to make a motion for this, and then we can? I, I can make a motion to vote to go ahead and vote on it. I wouldn't. You have to make a motion to vote. You have to make a motion. So, what action are you? To go to ahead and make to make the decision on milk and cookies today. I like just vote on what we, we you know, yay so, or nay, on well, on going forward with milk and cookies proposal. To, to clarify that, don't we technically have to make a a, a recommendation to the yeah. council on whether or not to execute the letter of intent as written? Yes. Because ultimately, it's council's decision. Right, right. We're not oh, making no, a decision. It's not our decision, but it's our decision whether to make the proposal to the city, the council. So. Okay. If you wanted to make that motion. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry, we're in the same room, so it's weird. Um, Becky, if you wanted to make that motion, it oh. would have to be either, you know, for or against, and then it would have to be seconded and voted on. So if that's the route we want to go, um, that's what we would need to do. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about future use of this property. I do think that a feasibility study would be great for something future, but for this particular item, Today, I propose that we make a vote on whether to go forward with it or not. Meaning continue discussion with- Milk and milk. cookies, yeah. And then, then there could be some provision with deciding, you know, I'm not opposed to use for the park for some other purposes that would benefit everyone. I just don't, I think there's enough negativeness about this particular item that we can just put it to bed instead of going, that's my, that's just my thought, you know, I'm only one person in the group. So, you know. So, so if I don't have a second, yeah. then it doesn't yeah. go forward. Or if I don't have a, if no one else agrees, then yep. it won't go anywhere. Right? Correct. Yeah. Is there yeah. a second for, for this? We need a motion. Well, I think she I did make the motion. What, what was your motion, Becky? To make to vote on whether milk and cookie would even be brought to the council. So what is your proposal? To bring it to council or not to bring it to council? To vote on the decision to take it there. And I would say no, that we don't need to take it there because there's already enough evidence, in my opinion, that milk and cookies is not the right venue for the park. Not saying that something else wouldn't work, but that can be brought up to us at a later date. So is that your emotion? Yes. To yes. To not to make a recommendation of no to the city council. For milk and cookies. On the letter of intent by milk and cookies. Yes. Okay, that's a motion. Is there a second? Okay, motion dies for lack of second. Okay. Is there so another motion? No, uh, so we don't need another motion at this point, right? We would just keep working on the letter of intent, correct? You could make a motion to table it to the next meeting to continue discussion. Hey, well, Amber, um, if we, so if we make a motion to table to next meeting, will that allow for us to um, make edits and send it back to uh, Milk and Cookies and their attorney and then take up a basically edited version next meeting, or do we have to make a motion uh, to uh, pursue edits to the letter of intent and bring the edited version up at next meeting? You could make, yeah, you could table it and make edits. Um, you could send those edits to Ashley and we could okay. try to get them organized. And then if you wanted to, um, we could send those over to Lance to see if he would be agreeable to or or not, um, and then y'all could take it up again as the edited okay. version to see okay. if that's something you all are satisfied so, with. So that's David. That's where I was trying to understand the very beginning. So it's like that's where I wanted to get to. It was a point of exactly yeah. that. 
so let me make a motion, Barry, okay. to, to basically um, uh, table it for this meeting in an effort to uh, pursue some matters of clarification to the letter of intent okay. um, with a the expectation that an edited version um, uh, would be brought back uh, next meeting um, for discussion. And in which case we would, we would recommend, uh, just to be clear, we recommend then either bringing it to council or not. Like that's the, I, I want us, I don't want this to drag on for six months. I don't want to force something through for the sake of forcing yeah, it through, I, but. I, I agree. Um, yeah, I agree. I second the motion, David's motion. Oh, okay, uh, all in, do we need to do all in favor? Or do we need to do a roll call? Uh, roll call, uh, Barry, how do you vote? Yes. David? Yes. Emily? Yes. Becky? I don't know how I vote because I don't agree with it. So I guess I say no, right? Okay. Yep, no. that's right. Yeah, okay. Motion passes. Okay. Um, the So that kind of wraps up agenda item uh, five and six, actually. Um, do we want to look at the financials? Are we going to item number seven? Uh, yeah, Pat was going to present. Looks like he had a drop off. Let me pull up the analysis. Um, sales tax revenue was down a bit um, this past month, um, but we are still on target to meet our budgeted amount of sales taxes. Um, but we did, you know, budget very conservatively um, with uncertainty around COVID. Um, so that's where we're at with the financials. Okay. Um, that would be the part of financials. I think uh, if there, now we need a motion to adjourn. I'll make motion a motion to adjourn. I second. Aye. Emily second. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The meeting is over. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.